Luke and Nate here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and we're gonna do some foraging. It's fall and that means it's time to pick autumn olives. Yes. Now every year we do a video about harvesting and processing autumn olives and every year I try to do something slightly different. This year I'm gonna try making autumn olive soda pop, autumn olive butter and a few other things. Are you excited? This bush right here that uh, Nathan's eating berries off of, that's an autumn olive. It's an invasive plant here on the East Coast. It grows lots of places where there's full sun, usually the edge of roads, bike trails, the edge of meadows or streams. It's got these very distinct berries. They're red with yellow dots on them. And you can see here, they get up to about 12 feet tall. But most of the bushes are more like eight feet tall, six feet tall. This bush is also really distinct in that the berries grow in really thick clusters, which makes it easy to harvest a lot of fruit. The autumn olive leaves are these long, skinny, smooth leaves. They go from dark green to almost a bluish color. Another thing that makes the berry distinct is it has this very large single pit in the center of the fruit. The autumn olive tastes a little bit like a lingonberry or a cranberry, but if you get it right at maximum ripeness, they are sweet. Mm. And these ones are good. Here in Virginia, the berries start to ripen end of September when the nights start to get cold. And you know the berries are ripe when you jiggle them even just a little bit and you start to get berries falling off. The best way to harvest autumn olives is to get a big basket or a wide mouth bin, hold it under the tree and just sit here and loosen the berries. Just rub them between your fingers and knock them off. I was tickling the autumn olives. You're tickling the autumn olives? All right, all these berries are just from two bushes and about 10 minutes of picking. So you can see, you can get a lot of berries very quickly with these autumn olives. They just produce a ton of fruit. Are you eating all those autumn olives? One weird thing about autumn olives is that they only tend to produce large amounts of fruit every other year. Last year, this bush was insanely full of berries. Now this year, you're lucky if you can find 12. Along bike paths and roads are great places to look for autumn olives. Oh, here's one. Is that right? Yeah, they're nice and ripe. That's good. The more the merrier. Is that what we always or say? The more the barrier. <laughs> that is a really small This is the autumn olive thing. Well, I ended up filling up the five gallon bucket a little over one and a half times. So that's about eight gallons of berries and it took me about two and a half hours. All right, we want to separate the good berries from all the leaves and stems and bugs and rotten fruit. You put a cooler or a tub or something like this and you put it on a slant. There you go. It's working. Just kind of get in there and agitate it very gently to free up all the trapped stems and leaves that didn't float to the surface. All right. We're just gonna let that run for a little bit. Five minutes in the cooler and it looks really clean. It doesn't need to be perfect. There's still a few stems here and there because when we remove the pits, we'll also get rid of the stems and any leftover debris. You just generally want it clean and you don't want a ton of debris. Got a very little bit of water on the bottom of this pot. All right, after only a few minutes of boiling, the berries have turned into the soup and we can let that cool and then separate the pits and stems out from the juice. Just one bag. doing a very thorough job on this, but 
So when you run the autumn olives through a food mill, you get the juice and you get the pulp. You let it sit and you get separation like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour off just the juice or as much of the juice as I can and use it in some autumn olive soda pop. And the pulp, I'm going to try to make, oh, maybe some fruit leather out of that. Might add it to the apple butter. We're gonna kind of play it by ear, see what happens. So I've separated the pulp into a pan here. We're gonna reduce this and make it into a thick jelly. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and add some malt sugar syrup to this autumn olive jelly. I prepared this about a week ago and let me show you how I made it. So the first step to making malt sugar is I'm gonna soak the barley sprouts. Just soak them in the water for anywhere from an hour to overnight. And dump these sprouts right in there. So there you go, got a half inch layer of barley seeds sandwiched between wet paper towels. It's been one week and you can see the barley has sprouted really good. It looks like a beautiful lawn. So we're gonna go and pry this out of the basket here. You can see it's uh, got some roots in the bottom, so we're gonna have to really pry this. There we go. Oh, that smells wonderful. But now I've got all this paper towel I need to pick out, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> all right, I got eight cups of uncooked rice here. I'm gonna rinse it, wash it, and add a little bit more water than I normally would. Uh, so slightly more than one to one. And that's gonna make a really soupy, wet, sticky rice. That maxed out my rice cooker. <laughs> All right, let's check the rice out. Ooh, that looks good. Little hands. Oh yeah, that. There we go, that's the way it should be. All right, look at that, nice and separating, starting to turn brown. We'll put it back in the oven for another six hours or so, and that will do well. All right, there we go, almost two gallons of malt syrup. I'm gonna go to bed, and tomorrow morning, we're gonna start reducing this and we're gonna make sugar and syrup out of this. Once it starts to boil, you get this kind of brown foam on the top, just skim it off with a spoon and keep boiling it. Well, there you go, I reduced the malt syrup by half and it's about the consistency of hot syrup right now. It'll get a little thicker once it cools down, but it tastes really good. It's sweet and has this uh, malt flavor, really strong malt flavor with it. It's. Uh, it's different than anything else you've tasted. It's a really unique flavor. All right, the malt syrup is done. Look how dark golden brown that is. So me, Nathan, and Jacob, we're gonna go do a little apple picking. You guys excited? Yeah! Look at this one. Well, we're here at Heartland Orchards in Northern Virginia and we're gonna be picking our own apples. They have a lot of different types of apples here, but it seems like here in the middle of September, Fuji's and Mutsu's are the most common one. Um, we're gonna pick mostly Fuji's because I wanna make cider out of those. I think those will make the best cider. Dad! It's stuck? My apple. My oh. apple. Daddy, I picked my apple. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go put those in the bag for me, okay? Apple. All right guys, that's one bag. All right, we got four bags, one bushel of Fuji, one bushel of Mutsu. That's a lot of apples. Oh, it's pick your own children. All right, we have two bags or one bushel of Fuji apples here. We're gonna use this thing, take the core out, 
Then we're gonna smash them up. We're gonna put them in the cider press and make some cider. Mama, have a Will you get that? Okay, you guys ready to smash some apples? Yes! That is amazing. Look at that beautiful stuff. Hey, sweet. Oh, I'm just, I'm thank just you. Taste. I don't, you. Oh, sweet mother of mercy. That's the best cider I've ever tasted. That's really <laughs> that is delicious. Wow. Whoa. I'm gonna take the leftover pressed apple chunks and I'm gonna boil them and we're gonna turn that into apple butter here. Gonna add some water to this and then boil the crap out of it. Okay, you can see. Add some cinnamon. I boiled this down about 75% and you can see it's nice and thick and smooth. The peels are mostly gone. Looking good, we're getting close. So the autumn olive syrup is all done, nice and thick there. The apple butter is smooth and thick and all done there. And we've got four loaves of fresh bread too to boot. I'm gonna make two batches. One is just straight apple butter and the other is autumn olive apple butter. Now we're gonna take some of this autumn olive syrup and we're gonna mix those two together. So we mix about two parts autumn olive to one part apple butter and it makes a really nice combo. The apple uh, butter makes it smooth, the autumn olive makes it strong flavored and a little bit tart. It's nice, really nice. All right, let's check out this autumn olive apple butter here. Oh yeah. Here, try this. Hey? I, I like it. It's not a strong flavor. It's not as strong flavored as jam or something. It's it's more subtle, you know? I know there's not as much sugar in it as jam. All in all, it took about 20 hours of boiling to make the uh, uh, apple butter. So that was really time consuming. That took a long time to boil that. Let's get the fruit leather out. All right, there we go. Let's see. There we go. There's a beautiful piece of fruit leather. Look at that. Hey, Nathan, you want to try some of this? Yeah. No, it's delicious. Mm. That's good, huh? Takes a lot of berries to make fruit leathers. That one little bit was probably a thing of berries like this. <laughs> Daddy, that, that, that.
Making autumn olive cider or soda is pretty simple. Take the juice with as little pulp as you can get, add white sugar and malt sugar until you get the flavor you want, and then that's it. That's all you need. If it's a little too strong, dilute it with some water. If it's too thin, boil it down and reduce it. Once it's cold, then we'll go and bottle it. Try the flavor of it, see if you like the flavor. Oh. Hey, what? We, we all make a We're just adding about seven to ten grains of yeast to each bottle. All right, got a dozen soda bottles out here in this beautiful fall weather. It's about room temperature outside. And that yeast will eat up the sugar and it'll give off carbon dioxide. It'll cause pressure to increase in the tops of the bottles and that will carbonate the soda pop. We'll leave it out here for about two days and then after that we refrigerate it to, to shut the yeast off to keep it from uh, going. I'll come back and check on this in two days. Woo! <laughs> It's a volcano, we got a chance. Daddy, can I try mm. it? That's good, you wanna come here and try it? <laughs> this is the best soda pop ever. Yeah. Well, there we go, autumn olive soda pop. Uh, I might have overcarbonated that a little bit. Uh, the biggest downside to using yeast to carbonate is that you have to refrigerate it after it's done fermenting. Otherwise, it'll turn alcoholic on you. But uh, it's kind of a fun little thing, and as you can see, it definitely gets plenty fizzy, man. Look at that. Look at the head on that. One nice thing about using these flip top bottles is that when the pressure gets a little bit too much, it just leaks out the side of the seal instead of blowing the top off the bottle. But, uh, so that makes it a little bit safer. A little bit of an update here. I was talking to some friends about my autumn olive sodas and they asked me, are they alcoholic? I assume the answer is no, because it's not really that much fermentation, but I figured I would find out. Turns out, I'm a little bit of a legal nerd. I'm a defense attorney and I collect breathalyzer machines. I'm multifaceted. So I brought one of my breathalyzers here. This is the CMI SD2 and this is the preliminary breath testing device used by the local police department here. I'm expecting a little bit of a reading. I get a 0 .03, a 0 .02 off of just eating white bread. If this was hard liquor like uh, whiskey, I would probably get a 0.7 or a 0.8 by blowing into this machine just after drinking a sip. So that'll give us kind of a range or comparison. Look at the bubbling action on this, so much carbonation. All right, so it's peaking on a 0.044. So this has just slightly more alcohol in it than a slice of white bread. So based on the breathalyzer results and some rough calculations, this homemade soda has about as much alcohol as a non-alcoholic beer like an O'Doul's, um, slightly more than a slice of white bread, and about as much, maybe a little bit more than eating a honey bun. Well, we had two bushels of apples and about 40 pounds of autumn olive berries. And from that, we got five gallons of apple cider, 36 bottles of autumn olive soda, three liters of malt syrup, two pounds of fruit leather, and about 30 jars of apple autumn olive butter. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy these videos. Don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Take care. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.